Racers love to throw words around that you only ever hear in motorsport circles, and sometimes that language is really useful for describing specifics. But what if you don't speak racing yet? No bother, our two-part glossary series has you covered. We'll get you fluent yet. If you haven't seen part one, check the card on screen now, then settle in for part two. OK, let's get into this. First up, hot lap. This is basically a full lap of the track driven as fast as possible. The lap might be hot, but you have to keep a cool head, balancing foot to the floor velocity with precision racing lines. Nerve shredding and more aggressive than a Mexican breakfast, <coughs> mastering the hot lap is a racing essential. Now let's take it to the infield, and as any decent track designer will tell you, the infield of a racetrack is the enclosed section which is enveloped by the track itself. Infield sections of a lap are the turns that point towards the inside of the layout. Now you know. Next let's lock in on locking up. When you slam the brakes too hard, the brake disc can't keep rotating against the brake pad, so basically the whole wheel stops moving. This is called locking up, and it is not a good thing. It can really ravage your tyres, causing a flat spot bonus bit of jargon for you there. Here's a fun one. If you veer off the racing line, your tyres will pick up tiny stones and other annoying bits of debris. These are known as marbles. They might be small, but they can have a big impact on your grip. Collect too many marbles and the rear will start to feel like a massive ice cube. The struggle is real, people. And that struggle can lead to oversteer. Pretty simply, this is too much steering. You turn into a corner too sharply. The rear end loses grip. All of a sudden, you're waggling about fighting the steering wheel like you're trying to yank off Thanos' glove. Not a good look. Remember, it's just as much fun to win as it is to watch your rivals lose. So when you overtake a fellow racer, take time to enjoy it. Making a rude gesture with your hand is frowned upon, but not technically illegal. Following the racing line is crucial. It describes the perfect route around the track, exactly the right points to turn in, exactly the right time to floor it. Do it right and you'll minimise the angles of every turn so you spend the maximum time accelerating and the least time at low speed mid-turn. We're sticking with the R's for a bit longer here and this one's all about getting low. Ride height's an important variable on your car's handling and it's measured by the distance from your chassis to the ground while travelling at full speed. Lower ride height means your car's centre of gravity is, obviously, lower. And that makes it more nimble. Higher ride height helps it to navigate bumps and rumble strips on the track limits. You know that feeling when they see you rolling and they hating? Don't you just hate that? When all cars start the race in motion, that's known as a rolling start. In this situation, it's less about clutch control and reactions and more about navigating the field around you. We finally slayed the R's and we're on to S now with setup. It's the combination of settings for a car's engine, aerodynamic features and tyres. Teams make continual adjustments to a car's setup throughout a race weekend and even during pit stops if the weather changes or the driver really, really wants a bit more front wing. Hands up, who remembers rolling starts from a minute ago? OK, I can't see any of you because this is a video, so hands down again, but thanks anyway. A standing start's the exact opposite of that. You engage the clutch, set your revs, wait for the lights to turn green, then disengage the clutch and let loose, managing that wheel spin. One of sim racing's friendliest euphemisms now, aggressive driving involving a lot of bumping and rubbing, is known as trading paint. It's also known as What an idiot. And They should get a penalty for that. And sometimes being Max Verstappen. Sorry Max, love you really. Now, during a corner, you have to reduce speed, right? Well, trail braking, sometimes called late braking, is when a driver applies brake pedal pressure during a turn so as to reduce speed as little as possible through the turn without losing control. Too heavy footed and you risk a Love Island level squabble with your steering wheel. Remember oversteer, this is the opposite of that. If your car's got more traction in the rear than in the front, it will understeer into turns. It's like when you're pumping a ketchup bottle and nothing's coming out. Here, you're dragging at the steering wheel, but the car's just not turning quickly enough. Understeer makes it loads harder to hit apexes and often forces the driver to brake earlier. When you first set up your car, try to find the right balance between under and oversteer for you. We're on to the final straight now. There are two situations you might weave on track. One is to warm up your tyres by making rapid and harsh inputs left and right on the steering wheel to generate heat for your tyres. The other is when you're defending a position from the other driver by blocking their way past. One is totally fine, the other is massively dangerous. Have a guess which is which. 
In fact, don't. It's the last one. Don't weave around under braking unless you're going for the most annoying Sim Racer 2019 award. Phew! That is our glossary of all the language you need to understand sim racing and the wider world of motorsport. But it doesn't end there. The list is practically endless, so let us know any terms you've never been sure about below and we'll answer them. If this video helped you out, show your love with a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss another video from us. We'll catch you next time.